Howdy everybody, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, as promised, I've given you another video, as you can see. And today, it is a very special one indeed, because this time, I'm doing my first iceberg video. If you're not sure what that is, it's essentially a chart that starts at the tippy top of what is most widely known about a subject or category, down to the depths of what is the least well known or obscure. And today, we'll be discussing the obscure slash lesser known cryptids iceberg. Now, this iceberg chart is kind of new as it came out in October, and I've always seen it float around in a couple of different subreddits. And because it's not that well known, I figured it'd be the most fun and different for you guys to do it on this one. Now, for the sake of my own sanity, I'm not gonna be going into too much detail with each individual cryptid on the chart, but I will leave the chart in the description below if you, there are any that, you know, tickle your fancy that you want to look into yourself because some of these are kind of interesting and some of them are kind of just goofy <laughs> today i'm only going to be covering the first three entries on the chart so consider this a part one and i promise scouts honor that i will do my best to get part two out as quick as i can so without further ado let's get into it i do apologize in advance if some of these cryptids are already kind of well known especially in the beginning for all you cryptozoology fanatics out there but trust me the deeper we go the more and more obscure these entries get so starting off with tier one will be the classic the mothman now what's your native folklore the mothman is a winged humanoid creature that was first seen in 1966 by a couple driving down the road in the middle of the night and was written about in the point pleasant register now this creature isn't necessarily popular because of the creature itself but of the events surrounding it as supposedly there were many mothman sightings before tragedies such as like bridge collapsings and it's kind of become a big staple of pop culture so pretty well known cryptid Winter cold or the smiling man is another west virginia cryptid more specifically a point pleasant cryptid and he is always reported of surrounding ufo activity and men in black sightings and is even popularized through some creepypastas that you may have seen from years ago in early school YouTube days. But this one is a, another commonly known cryptid and pretty believable because, I mean, there could very well be strange smiley man harassing people in West Virginia. I mean, it is West Virginia. Now, here we go. Another West Virginia cryptid, the Flatwoods Monster. Now, the Flatwoods Monster is uh, most commonly described as an alien, being approximately 10 feet tall, having small claw-like hands and glowing red eyes and a spade-shaped head. And it was first spotted by two brothers in the woods in the middle of the night in 1952. Now, most professionals believe that this creature was most likely just a barn owl that had light reflecting off of him during a meteor shower and it scared the two boys but you know where's the fun in that right and here we have another popular cryptid the jersey devil now this story originated in the pine barrens new jersey region in which a woman named jane leeds had 13 children in the woods and upon giving birth to the said 13th child she was very frustrated and exclaimed let this child be a devil and so he was and he came out as a strange, hooven, goat-headed, winged creature that terrorized people who dare enter the Pine Barrens. And this is more of like a, a folk tale or urban legend. And uh, I like this one because it's, you know, gives you that old Americana colonial vibe. Next on the list, we have the Fresno Nightcrawlers. Now, there's only three reported sightings of the Fresno Nightcrawlers. One in Fresno, California, and another in Yosemite National Park, and the third being in Poland of all places but this one is most likely a hoax at least in my opinion because the creatures kind of look more like lollipop ghosts you would see hanging in people's backyard during halloween and it can be easily staged but the video is kind of eerie when you watch it now but it's again it's most likely a hoax raymond theodore robinson otherwise known as the glowing green man or charlie no face is actually a real person and he was horribly disfigured as a child and would take frequent walks down the roads in western Pennsylvania and stories kind of spread about him as people would be obviously scared when they would first come upon him but he was actually a very nice guy and would try to make the best of a situation despite being disfigured for most of his life and this one it's kind of a sad story if you look more into it but uh it's also kind of inspiring too as the man was able to have a very peaceful life for the most part despite being disfigured and yeah honestly this is my favorite entry so far now the next entry is more of a general concept as flying humanoids are just 
sightings of humanoid creatures being spotted throughout the world, whether it be angels or creatures or superhumans, i.e. Chronicle style. And yeah, this one's kind of just a broad topic, if anything. The Dover Demon is a creature that was sighted in 1977 in Dover, Massachusetts by two children and was described as having a large head and tendril-like fingers. Now, I would put the Dover Demon kind of on the same level as the Jersey Devil or Bigfoot as he's inspired many other internet urban legends such as the rake and has been featured in countless books and movies and tv shows so yeah pretty popular cryptid to say the least the skunk ape or the florida bigfoot is a cousin of bigfoot that is most commonly sighted in the southeast united states most notably in florida and usually sighted around swamps or swampy areas and there have been many attempts to prove his existence through like you know sightings and video and footprints so I would kind of put him on the same level as Bigfoot, like in the same family. Now we are on to tier two. And the first up on the list would be the Black Stickmen. Now this is a relatively recent phenomenon and it refers to sightings of these strange, almost spider-like pitch black stick figures that many report to have a negative energy surrounding them when they come in close contact with them. And a lot of the ones I've seen have been videos of these creatures crawling on the sides of like people's apartment buildings so yeah all around kind of creepy stuff but again this is most likely just cgi <laughs> creatures to be honest and stage photographs but uh it, they are pretty cool this is the first time i saw them i thought it was like some weird like social experiment to freak people out next on the list we have the oil pit squids now this isn't necessarily creepy because of the creatures themselves but because of the implication and that's because supposedly 1996 when workers are cleaning a sludge pit in Anderson, Indiana, they reported seeing these small six to eight inch squid like creatures floating around in antifreeze liquid and random car parts. And the reason it's kind of disturbing is because either A, they're weird alien spore creatures or B, they are man-made horrors beyond our comprehension as a result of pollution in their mutated worms of some sort. Or C, they're just a hoax, but you know, I'll leave that up to you to decide. Next on the list, we have phantom kangaroos. Now, no, they're not ghost kangaroos, but they're supposed traces of evidence of kangaroos and wallabies being found in areas that they're not native in. And most people chalk this up to either mass hysteria, escaped zoo animals, or exotic animals that have been released in some capacity in areas where they shouldn't be at. Next on the list, we have devil monkeys. And devil monkeys are a sort of cryptid hybrid primate creature in a subset of bigfoot and many people believe that they are just a creature that hasn't been officially identified by science and people also believe that many phantom kangaroo sightings and evidence has found as actually sightings of devil monkeys next on the list we have the praying mantis man and it is you guessed it a supposed humanoid praying mantis looking creature that stands approximately seven feet tall and has been sighted near the muscatonk river and you guessed it New Jersey. Next on the list we have the Ninjin, which is a modern Japanese folklore creature that's existed since the mid-2000s. And supposedly it's a white whale-like sea creature that lives in the Antarctic Oceans. And interesting enough, these urban legends started in 2chan, which is the Japanese website version of 4chan. The Bunny Man Urban Legend is an urban legend that started in Fairfax County, Virginia, surrounding the Bunny Man Bridge. And it started in 1970 when a few different people reported seeing a man wearing a bunny costume and wielding a hatchet and terrorizing people. But it kind of took on a life of its own when it started to spread throughout the D.C. and Virginia area. And they mostly range from that the bunny man is a vengeful spirit that comes back every Halloween to avenge his death to him being an escaped mental patient that wields a hatchet and terrorizes people. Air rods or solar entities is a very strange cryptid on this list because they're not always necessarily creatures, but even skeptics acknowledge their existence as they're never seen with the naked eye, like live. They always show up in people's camera rolls later on. And most people theorize that they are falling plane debris or alien spacecraft. So yeah, this is kind of a, a weird topic. Organism 46 Bravo is a supposed sea beast that is around 33 feet long and has many squid-like qualities. and. It's capable of regrowing limbs and spewing out poison. It was supposedly reported near the Russian research station Vostok. And this one I'm just kind of just going to read from you an excerpt from the supposed sighting. Dr. Anton Paldaka claims to have been part of the first scientific expedition to explore the lake. We encountered Organism 46 Bravo on our first day. 
It disabled our radio, which we later learned to our alarm was intentional. It is also able to paralyze prey from a distance of up to 150 feet by releasing its venom into the water. Tragically, my colleague and lifelong friend was killed this way. So, yeah, that's kind of a SCP entry if I've ever read one, but yeah. The Hampton Court Police Skeletor is a supposed ghostly figure that was spotted in a gray robe in Hampton Court on security cameras. Now, to me, this doesn't really look like a ghost. It looks like a guy who's late to a D&D game, but apparently Hampton Court is known for its ghost and poltergeist activity, so I'll leave this one up for your interpretation. Tall white aliens ought to be confused with the smaller gray aliens are six to seven foot tall, very pale and chalky aliens that thrive in arid environments. And nuclear physicist Charles Hall claims that the US government has been cooperating and working with these aliens for several years. And there's been supposed many sightings with these different tall white aliens. And there's, to my surprise, several, several categories of aliens that people have been talking about for years. And this just happens to be one of the prevalent ones. Now, the Michigan Dogman is a werewolf-like creature that was spotted throughout the state of Michigan. And the sightings became more popularized after Steve Cook wrote a song called The Legend and played it on his radio show. And after the song was played, several people would call to the radio station claiming to have seen that creature mentioned in the song and from both recently and years prior. So, could be mass hysteria? Could this be urban legends being combined with new age sightings? I don't know. Now, super gators are more of a general concept of alligators being spotted and living in sewers, and they date all the way back to the 1920s. And the funnier ones to me are the ones that involve like really elaborate stories of like maybe an albino gator or someone having a pet gator as a baby that they flushed down the toilet. But yeah, this is a very common story, especially in cities like New York where they've been going around for decades. So yeah, this is kind of a funny one. Now, this one I'm not really sure why it's even on the list. It's a Supposedly a picture I found on Reddit that was from 1972 with the Grand Canyon and it just shows a dude near the cliff and a unidentified man in the background that looks taller than him. I don't know the story behind it. Maybe you guys can enlighten me on this, but I don't know why this is even on the list to be honest. Now the Cooper family photograph is another photograph entry in the iceberg, but I definitely remember seeing this as a creepypasta back in the early 2010s. But most people theorize that it's a hoax. But the story goes that a family moved in and on the first day they took a family photo. And when the photos were developed, they saw this body falling through the ceiling that didn't happen while they were taking the picture. And yeah, this one is most likely a hoax. I mean, it's it can probably be photoshopped and recreated, but I don't know too much beyond that. Now the Minicau or the Minicau, I don't know how to pronounce that, which hopefully I did it right, is a Brazilian folklore creature that is usually described as a very large fish or a very large worm creature. And honestly, this reminds me of like the giant sandworms from the Beetlejuice movie, if anyone remembers that. Now the Ahul or the Ahal is a giant bat and or primate creature. And it's given that name because of the apparently eerie screech it gives out when it's flying around. And it's spotted in the jungles of Java and all throughout Indonesia. It's kind of a, you know, Indonesian folklore creature. Now, the Coast Coast Area 51 call is referring to a phone call received in 1997 on a radio show hosted by Art Bell. And the creepy part about the phone call wasn't necessarily the fact that the caller was supposedly a former Area 51 employee revealing how the aliens have infiltrated our government and they're coordinating future plans for humanity. The creepy part is when, in the middle of the show, the entire show went off the air, like just immediately, and it took them a little while to get it back on. Now, no one really knows for sure who the actual caller was to this day, but the most commonly accepted theory that it was comic book artist Brian Glass, as he's claimed many times that yes, he was indeed the one who called. But his recreation was a little iffy, to say the least, and many other people have claimed to be the caller so this one's kind of like an unsolved mystery and finally for this video we're on to tier three and this is where things get a little bit more wacky <laughs> first on the list we have the amarillo wolfman now in the early morning hours of may 21st 2022 security camera footage picked up a wolf-like creature outside the amarillo zoo and most people speculate this to just be a man in a costume possibly the san antonio spurs coyote mascot which in my opinion it looks nothing like the picture but you know that's just one theory next on the list we have the vegetable man otherwise known as the veggie man and this creature was spotted in 1968 by a hunter named jennings frederick and according to his story the creature grabbed him came face to face with him and 
drained some of his blood, oddly enough, and then flew away in a spaceship. And this creature was spotted in, you guessed it, West Virginia. Now, the Loveland Frogman, otherwise known as the most normal resident in Ohio, has been spotted numerous times throughout the 1970s and even into the modern day in 2016, and has become somewhat of a popular Ohio folklore, but pretty much every account is basically the same. He's a around four foot tall humanoid frog-like creature, and most people chalk this up to being a iguana that's missing its tail. But, you know, I, I kind of like this one because this guy just looks, he's just, he's just vibing, man. This frog is just in his own lane, master of his domain, and just minding his own business. The Slide Rock Bolter was a monstrous whale-like creature that was reported by lumberjacks in the 19th and 20th century. And it's essentially a large creature that lives in the Colorado mountains and attaches itself at the top of mountains at an angle and when prey walks by like people or animals it lets go and slides down kind of like the alaskan bullworm and spongebob and just eats them and this one kind of became of a colorado folk tale and yeah the, it's basically just a giant worm whale creature that eats people uh this next one uh, i'm just going to show you the video and let you see it for yourself for this next one <laughs> Next one on the list is the Cemetery Alien, and this one is kind of an old school YouTube video that used to be passed around. You know, one of those old creepy styles that have like playbacks and zoom ins. And essentially, according to the story, someone was recording footage in a cemetery, and years later, after the fact, they reviewed the footage and saw this strange alien creature that was watching them in the cemetery. This one but could potentially be a hoax, but not much is widely known about it, so I'll leave it up for you. The Maryland Cryptid Museum isn't really a cryptid on its own. It was basically an ARG that had an old, you know, Victorian explorer that started a cryptid museum that where he would log all sorts of various creatures like tooth fairies and mothman and things of that nature. And it's actually kind of cool, like the effort they went into to recreate and make these like old urban legends and like creatures. And they actually periodically go and make trips and have pop-ups where you can go visit them. But, you know, it's pretty cool. I don't really know why it's on the list, but it's pretty cool. Brazno Dragon is a Russian folklore creature that is said to inhabit Lake Brazno in Western Russia. And this one is kind of like your stereotypical sea creature, serpent, dragon-like. But the coolest part about this is that supposedly, according to the story, during the uh, German invasion of the Soviet Union, <laughs> the Brazno Dragon ate an entire, like, German plane whole. So, yeah, this is kind of like just a cool, like, folklore story, honestly. The Beast of Gavadon refers to creature or creatures that terrorized people in France during the 1700s. And most accounts describe them as large dog-like creatures or striped hyena creatures. And many of the stories account of valiant tales of heroes, you know, slaying the beast until eventually the attacks kind of ended in 1767 and they kind of just became noted as folklore history. But they were probably based off real attacks that happened from like gangs of wolves. So, you know, make that of what you will. The monster of Lake Tota or the Devil Whale is a strange folklore creature because there's no official sightings of the creature. There's just historical references, like stories where they'll reference a giant fish monster that lives in Lake Tota in modern day Colombia. And these stories didn't really start until conquistadors came to the region where they kind of mishmash local legends with their own interpretations. So yeah, make that of what you will. The Mogollon Monster, or the Arizona Bigfoot, was another subset category of Bigfoot that was spotted in 1903. And he kind of has the same general descriptions as most other Bigfoot creatures, being large, bipedal, hairy, humanoid, ape-like. But the interesting thing about this creature is that supposedly, not only does he stink really bad, they for some reason had to emphasize that, but he can mimic other creatures and has a distinct blood-curling scream and even likes to taunt and throw rocks at tourists and campers. Like, I don't know, I would rather not run into this creature because he also supposedly drinks the blood of cougars, so God knows what he's gonna do to me. The Ohio, Michigan, and Connecticut Melonheads is a strange piece of American folklore, but most of the descriptions are about the same. They're small in stature, have large swollen heads due to a medical condition, but while most of the stories describe them as kids who left an orphanage and had to fend for themselves in the woods. The Connecticut one is a little different, where they are supposedly escaped middle asylum patients who cannibalize and interbred with each other in the woods, and all of them are known to attack 
passerbys and yeah they're kind of just disturbing to think about really the appalachian knot deer is a strange cryptid on this list as they're not necessarily cryptids on their own but they're just more so collectivized stories of people who lived in appalachia who have seen deer who aren't actually deer basically they're creatures that look like deer but they will behave differently or they'll look differently and just have a general sense of uneasiness about them. Maybe our friendly neighborhood Appalachian resident, Windagoon, can tell us a little bit more about these creatures. The Monterey Bruja, or the Witch of Monterey, was a strange cloaked figure that flew over a group of Mexican students in 2006 in Monterey, Mexico. And this one kind of has that old grainy UFO type video feel to it, but with the addition of a sketch by one of the students to show what she supposedly looked like. The Montauk Monster, or the Rhode Island Monster, was a strange looking carcass of a creature that washed up in Montauk, New York in 2008. And even though experts decided that it was most likely a water degraded raccoon corpse, I always thought it looked like the creature from the second Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, but you know, that's just me. The Falk Monster, or the Boggy Creek Monster, is a supposed Bigfoot like creature that harassed the small town of Falk, Arkansas in the 1970s. And this creature kind of became popularized due to the movie that was made about the events called The Legend of Boggy Creek. Now, I haven't seen it myself personally, but from the small clips I have seen, it kind of seems like a cheesy older horror movie. But, you know, hey, I would check it out yourself. The Manigishi are a race of trickster people that originate in Cree folklore. But the thing about these guys is that their tricks aren't just all funny games. They end up actually killing people by, like, tipping over their canoes and letting them fall off waterfalls. And they're kind of described similarly as the Dover Demon in terms of looks. But uh, yeah, they're kind of just little dicks, to be honest. Next on the list, we have another piece of Native American folklore called the Pugwudgie. Now, not to be confused with the J.K. Rowling Harry Potter universe of them, but the Pugwudgie is supposedly a small two to three foot tall humanoid creature that's capable of shape-shifting and using magic, with the most common form being a small porcupine troll-like appearance. And they used to be friendly to humans, but now they're best to just be avoided altogether. So, yeah, watch out. Next on the list, we have the Fallen Angel from the 2006 YouTube video. And this video has been confirmed to be a hoax. Uh, the YouTuber Goose Boost does a pretty good breakdown of the topic. So, I'm not really sure why this is on the list, because it's kind of a widely known hoax at this point. The Kune Kune is another piece of modern Japanese folklore that originated in 2001, and they're most commonly described as kind of scarecrow-like and having fabric and slender limbs that they wriggle around, and they're most commonly spotted on summer days. The Lake Bacall Dead Alien video is a video of a group of Russian guys who find a dead alien in Siberia, and yeah, that's pretty much all that is. The Argentinian Chupacabra is a supposed seven foot tall camel-like creature that slayed a German shepherd in Argentina. This is, it was a pretty straightforward story. Like, don't know too much else about it. Flying manta rays, West Virginia. You just cannot seem to stop with these cryptids, can you? But yes, in 2004, a couple driving from Point Pleasant to Huntington, West Virginia, spotted a giant manta ray creature hurl over their car. Now, experts decided that since most of these encounters were reported near rivers, that they were probably just manta rays that jumped out of the water and glided temporarily as apparently some species are known to do that which hey learn something new every day because i didn't know that either now this next entry is kind of just a wacky story to be honest i can probably make up its own entire video but gloria ramirez otherwise known as the toxic lady was a lady who was admitted into the emergency room in 1994 but the crazy part of the story is that many of the hospital staff died of exposure to her body and blood and experts were baffled for years as to why this happened, and most is chalked up to mass hysteria. But a recent theory concluded that she was basically exposing herself to certain chemicals that caused a reaction that caused hospital staff to essentially get sick. I'm just going to read this from the report because I don't think you guys would believe me if I didn't just read it straight off. But... An investigation by Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory proposed that Ramirez had been self-administering dimethyl sulfoxide as a treatment for pain, which converted into dimethyl sulfate, an extremely poisonous and highly carcinogenic alkylating agent. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like I'm just reading off chemicals from Walter White's class. But <laughs> I cannot believe that 
this story is real. I cannot believe it, honestly. And if you want to learn more about it, I, I highly suggest you look into it because the story is kind of nuts. So residents of Central Corral in Argentina, 2008, reported that uh, they were attacked by a gnome. That's pretty much the story. They A gnome attacked a bunch of people. That, that That's the story. The Fortran Grey Alien was a post made on November 21st, 2018. And even though most people determine this to be a hoax, it's still a fun story to read when you're scrolling through in the middle of the night. As supposedly the man while working on his car in the middle of the night took a picture of a giant gray alien outside of his window. So, you know, real good times. At first glance, the solar plexus clown glider seemed to be just another creepypasta image entry like smile.jpg. But the more I looked into it, the stranger this rabbit hole went down as there are stories of people saying that this image is a demon and it messes with your plexus chakra and that it's trying to infect your mind and make you a host for the infection down to, oh, it's also an MK Ultra experiment where the government was trying to manipulate dead rabbit radio podcast host, Jason Carpenter. And after all that, I found out that it, it's a hoax. The image is a hoax. It came from a book by John Baldrillard, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, called Why Hasn't Everything Already Disappeared? So yeah, don't be scared just looking at the image. Now, Momo the Missouri Monster is another Bigfoot-like creature, but Momo is kind of a sad niche micro-celebrity as he never really blew up similar to the Boggy Creek Monster or the Mothman did. It kind of just became this niche little folklore entry that no one really cares about. But it's basically the same thing as any other Bigfoot sighting, to be honest. Now, the Minnesota Dogman is basically the same type of creature, such as the Michigan Dogman or the Beast of Bray Road. So, you know, werewolf, wolf-like type creature. And there's not much to say about this one other than it's just a lesser known werewolf creature that no one talks about that much. Now the Ewok Trolls or the Thai Cave Trolls are basically small hairy creatures that were spotted singing and performing near caves in Thailand, but it was a hoax. It was a performance group that was doing a show in Thailand. So, but honestly, it would be creepy to come upon these things if we're just sailing down, you know, caves in Thailand. I would be pretty freaked out seeing them, regardless of what they were singing. Now, the Sunnyvale Toys R Us was a Toys R Us located in Sunnyvale, California. And this obviously isn't really a cryptid entry, but I'm guessing it was put on the list because it became popular in the 70s when a seance was hosted there on the show That's Incredible. And there's not much else known about this Sunnyvale place besides that supposedly many ghosts of children resided at the Toys R Us, but it's since been closed down, so obviously no one really visits or talks about it anymore. This next entry is just a YouTube video called The Mysterious Man Touches Shoulder of Another Man. And it's basically just a unknown man who gets the attention of another man on the camera where he narrowly avoids being injured by a closing rail door. Yeah, it's kind of straightforward, but many people believe that this was a angel or death himself that was coming to spare this man. So if you want to put that much meaning into it and to make it more inspirational, then by all means go for it. The Moorhead CCTV creature is a pretty recent phenomenon where a strange, white, hunched over creature is seen walking outside the view of a security camera in Moorhead, Kentucky. And honestly, it just looks like me when I'm getting shredded cheese in the fridge in the middle of the night. So I don't know, make of this what you will. So guys, this next entry is a um, very serious one indeed. It's a uh, the Van Meter Visitor. Essentially, it's a uh, giant pterodactyl-like creature with freaking laser beams on its head. And I don't know how else to describe it. It's That's all it is. It's just, <laughs> and the townspeople, they tried to shoot it, and it apparently it didn't do anything. So it was a giant armored pterodactyl with freaking laser beams on its head. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> Squawk is the next entry on this list. And I figured, what better way than to simply read the description of a squawk from one William T. Cox in which he wrote about it in Fearsome Creatures of the Lumberwoods. The squawk is of a very retiring disposition, generally traveling about at twilight and dusk because of its misfitting skin, which is covered with warts and moles. It is always unhappy. Hunters who are good at tracking are able to follow a squawk by its tear-stained trail, for the animal weeps constantly, and when cornered in escape seems nearly impossible, or when surprised and frightened, it may even dissolve itself into tears. So yeah, it's not a good day to be a squawk, ever. The Cactus Cat is a fearsome critter in American Southwest folklore, 
And it's essentially just a bobcat that has a long spinal-like tail that he uses to slash open cacti to drink the juice out of it. And it usually just spends its time sleeping throughout the day and then drinking cactus juice and eating bugs throughout the night. And also howling. Apparently it howls a lot. And honestly, it's kind of just a vibe, honestly. He just kind of chills and does whatever the hell he wants. Finally, we come to the final and my least favorite entry in this list, the giant Congolese spider, in which it's essentially a giant trapdoor spider that was first reported in 1890 by British missionary John Symes. And it was once described as being once numerous, but now a fading away species. Which is good, because who the hell likes spiders? I honestly don't know how people do these iceberg charts all the time, because some of these can get pretty long and convoluted, and I think this is one of the easier ones, honestly. But thank you to everybody who stuck around this long to hear me talk about random critters and cryptids. And I hope to get part two out as soon as I can. So just don't worry about that. I'll get to it. And just in case it's the last time I see you, stay safe and have a good one. Goodbye.